Well, hello, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. You know, um, I wasn't ready for the off season, And I think I am in the five stages of grief. And, you know, uh, I I'm, I'm, I'm think I'm literally just depressed where I need to be taken, talked off the ledge right now. Because I've heard a couple of things today, and I'm not sure if they're true or not. And I, I got my buddy game time because I, I, I'm in a bad place right now. I'm in a bad place because I'm putting together these pieces of things that I've been doing. And let me say shout out to Brian because Brian, after a holiday uh, snowstorm, it's cold as shit outside. You got tons and tons of junk mail to deliver. Oh, I know man. you got home late, but man, I'm in a bad way, man. And like I said, this is like uh, like an AA meeting for me, man. Listen, I'm, I'm about man, to take a drink. And, you know, I just need this. I mean, I, I'm a freaking laughing stock, you know. Here it is, me and Michael Anthony Fitness and Dem Boys Kicks. <laughs> you know, we, it. we're on G-Bag Nation. My wife is, <laughs> my, 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 somebody sent, you know, the viral clip of me falling out and stuff. And all I have to do is go, fuck. And she just will just start laughing and won't stop laughing at me and stuff. And I'm sitting here thinking about how much I, time I invest in the Cowboys and when I hear some of the things I'm hearing right now, I'm just like, what the F? Man, um, I don't know where you're going with this, but I've heard some things too. And um, eye-opening, but for some reason, I feel good. Don't ask me why. Okay, well, so then, I, I need, then, then you. you're the right person. Okay, yeah. first of all, let me say this. Now, again, I don't know if this is true or not. You can fake stuff left and right. But somebody shared with me that Kayvon Turpin, Turpin Time, and Sam Williams had a victory party that they were advertising for Sunday night. That they were posting this on social media. Well, we're going to have a victory party. All right. The fudge? Are, are you upset with that? Because, listen, this is how it works, Mark. You, <sighs> you know. Bro. That's I mean, counting the chickens before they hatch. In Vegas. I understand. And on th on theory, but when you are... Now, who did you say? Sam Williams and... Sam uh, Williams Turpin. and Kayvon okay. Turpin. These are lesser like m money. I mean, these guys aren't making a lot of money, okay? They I get are this. part of a promotion that they have to advertise. They got sucked up in it. It's not something like, we know we're going to win. We know we're going to win. No, they're going to Brian, someplace. Brian, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't care if you're not making any money or not. If you're putting out there on social media that we're having a victory party, Agreed. and and the other it's people see this, is let's see. Look at these mother humpers over here that already have the victory party set up. And here it is. How many times did Turpin end up getting the ball on the three yard line and try and return it and get stopped on the fifteen? How about you go ahead and just fair catch it because it's going to go on the twenty five? You know, maybe after the first or second time that you didn't get it out to the 15, that maybe you would think about that. And maybe Sam Williams, if he wasn't thinking about the after party, wouldn't be running into the damn uh, returner, causing us 15 yards. Which, by the way, is not the first time this jackass has done that. This is like the third time. Yeah, I agree, man. I, you know my feelings on Sam Williams. Upside is great, but he's, I don't know. I'm trying to be nice. <sighs> This is Randy Gregory part two. He's, he's football stupid. Let's put it that way. I won't say I don't know the man, but happens once. Okay, you're a young player. Happens twice. Come on, bro. It keeps happening. But as far as the party, I know it's a bad look, but they were probably getting a like an appearance fee and they had to advertise. I get what you're saying, but it's no more egregious than Micah Parsons. Then, doing then maybe a you call it Cowboys post party there you go you don't call I'm it a victory party but cowboys no post party I, 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 I wonder like did, did they go to the party afterwards i bet you they did because see and, and, and maybe this is me personally because 
I remember playing football at JMU. And the JMU, we weren't that good, you know, back in the day. We were winning three or four games, you know, uh, a, a season. It was the infancy of JMU football. And we'd lose the game. And, you know, we got the, 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 the DJ and the party, and everybody's party having a good That's time. Not and I'm just sitting here like, yeah. I'm That's pissed off that we lost. I don't want to party. I, I don't want to party. We, we lost. And I'm just looking at my teammates like, we got our ass handed to you. Why you want to party? Mm hmm. Well, and then, okay. And then, 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 I got, then I got Micah Parsons. I love Micah. Micah, one pressure, one tackle. Yeah. Wow. Again, and he was critiquing. I don't want Micah to go anywhere. But I'm you, not saying that. I'm not saying I want him to go anywhere. But no, he was but critiquing somebody's him. performance that day before. And then you do that. And then now you don't show up for your podcast. Oh, he didn't. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like I said, I've been really running. So, I, don't, I you know. I don't, I'm kind of out in the loop here. I'm getting my information through your headlines. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but, but I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, because if you're going to make a decision, and this, this, this starts with Jerry Jones. If you're going to make a decision, they always told me growing up and playing football was, if you're going to F up, F up at full speed. Don't take forever to make a mistake. Right. Uh, that's, so yeah. here we go. When we had uh, Jason Garrett... They kept him on the string for a week, showing up for work and everything before they finally fired him. All the good people that were out there that were available got jobs while you're sitting there waiting around. You're doing the same yeah. thing with Mike McCarthy. If you're going to fire the man, yeah. well, why don't well, you just I, fire him and try and say, hey, uh, let, let me go ahead and get Bill Belichick. You know, he's, now, I already he's literally know right saying now. He already like met with Bill Belichick. So I'm just, that's that's game time scoop. I'm telling you, he got on the plane. You're not getting on the plane to go talk to Vrabel. You're not. You're only getting on the plane to talk to one, the one guy. Whether Belichick comes here, whether they fire him, uh, who knows? If I'm Belichick, I'm not coming to Dallas as long as Jerry Jones is here, or or, or you need to get some kind of insurances, you know, because Jerry needs to back off. Jerry just needs to back right. the hell off. And so, I'm on record. We need a change, Mark. We cannot, uh, ha you know, it's 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 a joke at this point. I'm sorry, Mike. When you look into it, you have a lot of regular season wins, yeah. but. There's not a lot of meat as far as playoff wins. He won a Super Bowl, so that's great. And I'm not saying he's a horrible coach, but we've been down this road. Okay, we've won a but, lot but, of games. But, Brian, Brian, here's my thing, though. You got Micah, you know, doing his podcast and critiquing everybody Don't else. Like and, it. And, and basically bringing the wrong attention to us. You're not making any favors with the officials by throwing them under the bus constantly. You're not. Who are the other players in the league? Because they didn't vote for your ass for nothing. You're pissing everybody. That's what off. I'm saying. So, and you don't. You, you you've got the appearance of being be a fair weather fan because now you're not showing up after you didn't show up. Right. So now you look like I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I don't want to call him a punk ass bitch, but you know, I'm sitting here. I know I've talked a lot of shit on here, but guess what? I'm here. Manning up. I when, when I talk the talk, I walk the walk, and that's called being a man. You can't just be there when you're a fair weather fan. I mean, being a fair weather fan, you just can't. I agree. I and agree. this whole thing where we got everybody worried about their after parties, worried about their podcast and everything well, else, all this stuff, you know. And you got Jerry it, Jones taking forever to make mistakes. How do you expect to th think that we're gonna win? Well, I can't help you with all this because I've told you about the country club environment. Uh, That's you know, the problem. Like, uh, There's you know, Jerry the, Jones listen. and the country club environment. I understand the star is great, but the star is not getting you players. Did Shaq Leonard get – now, don't get me wrong. That was probably the best thing that ever happened to us, and it was only going to be for the rest of the year. But Shaq Leonard is a – he's shot. He stinks. Yeah, well, he well okay, speaking of stinking, okay. Now, you know, I, I got my, my buddy Wade up here, and he's, you know, he's, of course, screw Dak, like a lot of people. Dak's not the answer. Blow, you know, everybody's blow the whole thing up. And I'm sitting here thinking, if you say blow this thing up, 
let, let's say hypothetically we do, or let's say let's just draft another quarterback. I look at the track record of what the Cowboys have done trying to find a quarterback. They've lucked into the last two guys, and people all of a sudden think that it's just easy. But if you're talking about wanting Johnny Manziel, if you're talking about wanting Paxton Lynch and um, Connor Cook, yeah, these are the guys that – you, you guys well, are trusting to say get rid of Dak and get uh, one of these guys. No, 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 no. Okay, no. The all right. Only way, the only way I would get rid of Dak not, is to go up and get the number one pick, which is going to cost multiple first round picks. That's the only thing I would do. Okay, be and, and here's the problem. If not, then okay. we're sticking with I Dak. I mean, and that sounds good. Okay, yeah, you got a great quarterback. But if you got a great quarterback and you can't get yourself a left tackle. If you can't get yourself a running back, if you can't get yourself a linebacker, you're stuck in the same spot that you are right now. Yeah, you need I, I agree you need you. more picks to get more people. Because here's here's the thing that people keep thinking: Well, Dak's got all kinds of talent around him and stuff. And by, by mm. having by having the all pro thing, because this is where I almost feel like they're setting the Cowboys up to have you know we have what eight all pros. Well, look, that that got all the more pro good right. on, on his team, you know, and and he can't succeed. To turn around and say that Tyron Smith is an all pro and he doesn't play three quarters, I mean, only plays like three quarters or half the season if you're lucky. Yeah, no, seriously, mm-hmm. that our offensive line was in flux all year, but now you're gonna say we got three all pros? They didn't play like three all pros. No, not at all. But no. I'm sitting here looking because here's here's my problem. If the Cowboys just decided to do a couple of things a little differently, instead of Anthony Barr, you go get Bobby Wagner. It wasn't that much difference in money, was it? Bobby Bobby Wagner ended up being like $5 million a year. He would have helped stop that gashing run that we gave up on Sunday, that's for sure. I'm sitting here looking at the, the, the free agents we've gotten since 2016. Some of and basically almost all of them have been like journeymen or people past their prime. Alfred Morris, Benson Moya, Nolan Carroll, Stephen Pia, Coney Ellie, um, Cedric Thornton, George yeah, Ioka, they want everybody, yeah. Randall okay. Cobb, Kerry Hyder, Trayvon Austin, um, Jonathan Cooper, Emerson Griffin, Andy Dalton, Daryl Worley, Alden Smith, Don Terry Poe, Haha Clinton Dix, J. Ron Curse. Demonte Kazee, Malik Hooker, Brent Urban, Carlos Watkins, Keanu O'Neill, Terrell Basham. Now you got, you know, some good time out of J. Ron uh, Curse, Demonte Kazee, and Malik Hooker. Yeah, I'm not saying that we didn't do well with those guys, but when we signed them, they were bottom tier guys. You don't look around and say, "This is a guy that's going to have some staying power that's going to make an impact on your team." Yeah, and as and I you know look, what? what's that? <laughs> you know, you know we're going to get Stephon Dix, but we're not going to get him now. We'll get him in in three years from now. Yeah, so, I mean, we always like to get guys at the tail end on the cheap. Yeah, and I understand you can't pay everybody, so, you know. But here's the thing. You do, you know, and I saw somebody, an article came through. Cowboys can save $9 million by cutting... Um, Michael Gallup. Yeah, you you do in essence for this year. You you basically are taking four million of his money of the thirteen this year, and then you're taking a nine million dollar dead hit the next year. It's kind of like with Zeke. Zeke was right. a post June first. Zeke's costing six and a half million dollars next year in dead money. So you're not saving. You're still paying him thirteen more million dollars, whether he's on the team or not, over the next two years. Wouldn't the Cowboys have been better instead of signing Michael Gallup and and also having to pay um, Brandon Cooks his ten million dollars next year? That's twenty three, twenty three eight. They've been better if kept Amari Cooper. Mm, exactly, but I, I'm just saying. Yeah. I, it, well, they got, you know, just to walk you off the ledge there, they got in their own feelings regarding Amari. That had that wasn't a football decision. That was a, it was personal with them. He didn't want to do what they wanted to do. 
not to revisit it at all, but yeah. oh, it was all it was all COVID related. Um, Jerry Jones again. Before we went on, uh, we were talking. Jerry Jones needs to take a strong look in the mirror, Mark, when it comes to how he runs the Cowboys. How his, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Brian Broad has even said it. He he said that when Mike McCarthy was first hired, obviously there were some conversations regarding Jerry taking a step back, being to focus on him. Yeah. After you know, and if you guys remember early on, I was surprised at the press conferences. They would always say, like Jerry would say, "Well, let Mike answer that. Let's Mike answer that." And that and didn't Jerry, last. Jerry went back to being Jerry. Now it's Jerry Jones show after every game, and everybody doesn't give two craps about what McCarthy's saying. They're all waiting for every little thing so they could twist it or or stick it or go back to Mike and say Jerry says this. Jerry's a problem. Okay, the you know the. It, yeah, the reason why we won back in the 90s under Jimmy Johnson because the players actually feared him. you talking about the players having victory parties scheduled. You got Micah Parsons doing a podcast, predicting winners, talking down about like your fellow players in the league. It's gone way too far. You know, being able to be America's team, and Jerry doesn't care whether you talk positively or negatively. He just is happy that you're talking. Mm -hmm. He doesn't care what you're talking. That's why he welcomes everybody in the training camp. Come on. He has the reporters, all the media guys. He sits down, and they have a night of drinking. He wants them to all just like, you know, it's almost like a YouTuber. Just get the content out. Get the content. We don't care what kind of content. Let's just get it out there. And that's what it and seems like. Everybody it's... is talking Cowboys. It needs to slow down, Mark. We're never going to win nothing because the players don't respect the coach enough because they know Jerry's the guy. I'm hey, I'm supposed to talk you off the ledge. Who's talking me off the ledge? It's a little uh, It's a little, I, I, it's a little I thought you were going to make me feel better, man. Now I know. Sh- I am making you I'm feel ready better. I'm ready to jump off the reason, ledge now. For some reason, I feel good. I'm not as upset as well, then, I well, thought then Tell I me what you feel good about then. Okay? I feel good about, like, we have a team now that's going to have a lot of wins next year. They will put a you know a really good team together. We're a hell of a lot better off than the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm sorry, Eagles. You just lost Jason Kelsey. I said it last night. He can't, he's done. It's official. He's retiring. Lane Johnson is is contemplating retiring. Uh, he'll probably play another year. Tops. You know the end is near when it comes to that offensive line. What made the Eagles special was your line. It it didn't look so special last night, or on the, yeah Monday night. So I think we are going to win the division or be in the conversation. The Giants are a long way off. Washington, it's going to take a little time. I think Washington might be one of the better situations in the league to coach based on pick, but it's going to take some time. We got Dak Prescott. He's not going anywhere, Mark. We need to do the right thing. Replace this coach with somebody who's a motivator. I don't know That's who that a, is. You, you, a disciplinarian. Be, it, and, and needs to be Motivator, discipline. Yeah. yeah disciplinary. But, but no, but see, we, we need to stop this. You're doing podcast shit yes. in here, you know, putting out the laundry of what's going on and, and basically making people hate you, especially the, the officials. We need to stop this shit about we're going to have a p- after party, you know, victory party and shit when we ain't one shit. And we can't allow. You know, think about what Jimmy Johnson would have done if do Sam that. Williams was on his uh, team and he had that f- freaking penalty. Yeah, yeah, he might have cut Sam. I don't know that he would have cut him, but he would have. Uh, I mean, it would have been ugly. Um, this keeps happening over and over, over and over. I mean, Micah is really talented, a talented player, but he's kind of disappointing me. It's like really making me second guess. You know. I know we need him, but he needs to mature, man. You're not, you're a football player. Like Michael Irvin said, all this will come after you're successful. You know, you know, after you've done something, all this media and all this stuff will come, but he wants it now. Mike is no different from any other young person that I know these days 
whether it's at my job, they want it all now. They don't want to work for it. They don't want to they pay their dues. Mm -hmm. They just want to go right to the top of the line. And Micah wants to be the podcast guy. Hey, whatever. That's not me to say no, but I think the, your coach should be pulling you in you know, the office say, yo, Micah, you, really? This is what we're doing here? It's not like you're having a great year. Yeah, he, he led the league in pressures, if that means anything. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah, good, but, right? But see, and here, here's the thing um, with Dan Quinn. I think, to me, it's a fatal flaw with the defense. The fatal flaw is it's incredible, it's dynamic, and it gets after the quarterback. Mm -hmm. If you look at it, it's fast and physical, right? You got guys that are taller, faster, but are lighter than in the ass. The problem is, is A, when he was the coach in, in Atlanta, Matt LaFleur, uh, Sean McVay, and uh, Shannon I didn't know McVay was there. That's what, that's what I, I think that's what I read. Now, maybe I'm wrong on that one. But and maybe he wasn't then. Maybe, maybe I've got it wrong. But, I didn't know, but, but I know. But they're all the from the same kind of cloth, there, and they yeah, all yeah. know how to run the ball down our throat against them. Right. Yeah, he, you and, know uh, that is the flaw, right? Everybody's been saying it. Well, it, it, the problem is, is it's playoff football is about running the football, right? Well, I think it's been masked by our propensity to, you know, to be up on teams, right? We're getting these big but leads. Then you get playoffs; it's a different animal, right? And which is why you know everybody's up in arms that the Eagles decided to stop running the ball. It's like you are running at will, and yet you still want to drop back and throw and throw and throw. Um, just very surprising, Dan Quinn. You brought Dan Quinn up that we decided to play a zone. Uh, oh, we yeah. don't play zone on this team. We haven't played much zone at all this year. Mm -hmm. Yet that was the game plan. We're going to play zone and let... Jordan Love trying to decipher our zone. Well, clearly our players didn't know zone very well because they were given so much room that it was passes on air. So mm -hmm. I'm done with Dan Quinn, too. You can't have that performance. I know Dak, what, he gave up, uh, you know, 14 points or, you know. Well, I mean, if you look at Kurt Warner, Kurt Warner will say, well, one, I think Cooks, it could have been pass interference. But he put it out there that Cooks kind of ran a lazy route in mm -hmm. there, okay? And I look at it, and I'm seeing the guy grabbing all over him and everything, and it's not a pass interference, you know, and that, that shit happens. And then there was the um, – where he's forcing it to CD, the pick six there. Um, but by all means, it wasn't just Dak. If you, if you told me the defense gave up 16 points – and we gave it those 14 because of the interceptions. And I'd say, yeah, then it's just Dak. But we didn't do anything right. We didn't. We looked like we just showed up on Sunday to play a game. And that's the coaches. Mm. It is. So that's I'm, I'm sitting there looking at it saying that Jerry is allowing the inmates to run the asylum and do anything. No discipline. And he's ignoring glaring weaknesses. You know, we, we've known for a couple of years we got a problem at linebacker, but we still keep propping Leighton Van Der Esch yeah, out there. Yeah, I don't understand. I don't understand. Yeah, exactly. You know, I don't understand. We, we know we have out. a Tyron Smith problem, but we still keep propping but him out Dan there. But if you're Dan Quinn, okay, let me ask you this. If you're Dan Quinn, why are you allowing that? You know you need linebackers. Why are you allowing it? Is it because that you're happy to have a job with the Cowboys? I, I don't know. I don't know. I need this. I need that. I need this. Go get it. Why are we not giving Dan Quinn when he wants it? Is not is or is Dan Quinn not asking for that? It, it was very suspect to me. You can't leave all your eggs in a basket of Demarvin Overshow. And he's a rookie for crying out loud. As big of a ceiling as he might have, he's kind of an undersized guy. He's not your typical linebacker. He's more of a hybrid guy. So that was an egregious thing from the get go. To look back, we were doing this with mirrors. Dak had a great year. Mm -hmm. Dak's not the problem. People say well, Dak's a You don't joker. have a running game. You, you, don't, know, you don't have okay. a back that can get Listen, you. Listen, man, he's not perfect, okay? The defense shit to bed, too, on, on Sunday, which then put that much more pressure. You go to the sideline and go, oh, my God, I need to get it all now. 
So you maybe take some chances and don't look as much. You know what I mean? It, it all goes in the same pot. But I'm trying to make you happy and just lift your spirits that we still are the best team in this division. And you have to okay. win the division. But we need to have a coach. And we need it now. We can't wait. We can't. That's and if saying. you're keeping McCarthy, then come out and say you're keeping McCarthy. Yeah. If the, I mean, if that's what you're going to do, stop playing the effing game and go do it. You, we're going to wait, okay? And we're there's going to be guys that get signed, and then we're going to be stuck with McCarthy. I don't want to be stuck with anybody. We're the Dallas Cowboys. You want somebody? Go get them. Now, do you? I ask you. Do you have faith? In the Cowboys are picking the right guy. Again, they they after <laughs> round and it was basically Mike McCarthy was the guy that was left standing. Right, and you that's know? what scares me. It's like, oh well, you we want you, but you're gonna have to deal with me. Do you have to deal with it? Now, I don't. I actually think Stephen is a, less of a hands-on guy than Jerry is. Jerry, mm. Jerry's Jerry. There's a reason why we haven't won shit since Jimmy Johnson left because Jimmy demanded a certain amount. Yeah. Jerry's more like your buddy, you know, and he wants the limelight. It's hey, yeah, go party it up. We're you know we're the Cowboys. That's it's getting old, man. It's getting old. And right, I think that so. was a serious problem with why our playoff success. We can get away with kicking ass every year in the regular season, mm -hmm. you know, staying healthy. We're that good. We're that talented. But playoffs against better teams are going to run right at you. So, and, and we don't have an answer for it. But I think it's not as bad. We're not far off. Eagles are a total retool on defense. They're a well, total retool. Philly 500 blowing. believes that uh, Nick Sirianni is gone in the next couple of days. Okay, he may be gone. You know what I heard today? I heard Jordan Davis. They want him benched okay i told you they this when they drafted extra heavy Herbert, duty goes, i really love jordan davis i'm like look at him i mm -hmm. said his history is he's always overweight mm -hmm. you put some money in your pocket and go to an nfl franchise where you're not hovering you know it's like going to college you know you're now you're not it's up to you to go and do the work unless right. you're some superstar then somebody can do your work for you for the most part you got to put the time in if you don't put it in you ain't gonna succeed in college so he's He's he ain't looking good, Jordan Davis. Okay, Dylan Carter. Okay. All right. right. Well, I know you've had a long day, and I think you're depressing me even more. <laughs> Listen, man, we're good. We are good. But now's the time to make our decision what we're doing. Please don't wait. That's all. We're I, the most I, just, team in the I, I need I need something to show me that this is going to be different. But I don't feel like there's going to be anything different. I just don't. Um, well, I think they were embarrassed, Mark. They were embarrassed on national we, television. We ain't been, been embarrassed before? Not like this, man. Not like this. We were embarrassed with the Niners, but the Niners were good. This was a, we were a seven-point favorite. There's never been a seven-seed win. It's only been going for like a, you know, like a few years. But we're, we're the first one to lose. Okay. Um, we were a seven point favorite at home and got blown out. Mm -hmm. By One point a rookie, down, twenty seven to nothing. To Jordan Love, he's never been in the playoffs in a whiteout. He sold out AT and T Stadium. That's embarrassing, All right, Brian. I think I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> I'm going to go Sorry, hide man. under the covers. It's about eighteen degrees out here right now. It's cold. We're uh, still them boys. Trust me. We're going to be good. We're going to be good. It's just, uh, it was, hopefully we can learn from this. Hopefully. All right. Well, what you got coming up soon? What, what um, you got going on? Mm, no, I'm working all week. So, yeah, look out for my lunchtime chats. Mm -hmm. uh, and we'll be streaming the weekend games, obviously. So, uh, okay. Saturday, 430, I'll be streaming both games. And Sunday, uh, I think, 3 o'clock. All so, right. It sounds like a winner then. Well, at least the Eagles lost. Yeah, that's true, man. How about them Eagles? Yeah. Go birds. All right, good people. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, we've got to figure out how to fix the boys. And let me say shout out to my man, Game Time Brian. He is putting in the work 
on his regular job as well as here on YouTube. Definitely check him out on Game Time, Brian. He does his afternoon lunchtime. He instead, you know, instead of spending time eating the stuff in his face, he's yeah, yeah. stuffing your mind with knowledge <laughs> on the Dallas Cowboys. I'm Mark Holmes and Game Time Brian, and I'll see you Peace soon. Peace out.